Welcome to uh, Covenant Keepers Ministry and uh, Video Devotions for the week of June the 11th. Today is Monday, June the 11th. And I want to thank you for joining me and I want to encourage you. We're just trying to share the Word of God on these video devotions. And if you know someone who would benefit from them, would you just pass it on via Facebook or some social media? Or just give them a buzz and say, hey, uh, why don't you just join us here? You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube channel if you want to. And uh, uh, I'm excited about sharing God's Word. And we are in a study of the Sermon on the Mount. And I'm reminding you that He called us salt and light in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, this is the way people who follow me ought to live. I want your righteousness to exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. And so today, we're at verse 33 through 37 in Matthew chapter 5 as we're continuing, continuing our look at the Sermon on the Mount. Here's what it says. Again, you have heard it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it's God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You know, it's amazing what kind of conversation I am hearing believers have all the time. And I am shocked because I believe that there ought to be a distinction in the conversation between those who follow Christ and those who don't. I'm referring not only to the use of swear words, but I'm referring to the conversation that, that talks in jesting and filthy jokes and, and innuendo and slamming and uh, having bitter water and sweet water come out of the same mouth. These things ought not to be. That's what the Word of God says in, in the book of James. So Jesus is addressing this just like he did lust, adultery, and divorce. And, and he's trying to help us be the kind of people that live above the standard of the world. So today I'm going to encourage you as we talk about oaths in the Old Testament, and then we'll talk about them tomorrow in the New Testament, to hear carefully what Christ is saying to us today. It was about 5.30 a.m. one morning. I was uh, out in the driveway and two teenage kids were on their bicycles. Uh, off early in the morning for teenage kids to be up, I know. And the language that was proceeding out of their mouth, I, I literally was shocked. Today, it doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl, a woman, a man, uh, the filth, the, the putrid, the nasty, the, the rotten language that comes out of people. Listen, Christ is talking about our conversation here and how we use our conversation for his glory. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at what Christ is saying to us here and let's, Let's believe God to help us to do better. So we're going to look at oaths in the Old Testament. So I'm going to read a number of scriptures from there. And tomorrow we'll pick it up in the New Testament. And then we will see clearly what Jesus has to say. When he says, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. So in Numbers chapter 30, verse 2, and I'm reading, it says this. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement. He shall not break his word, but he shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. So don't vow anything to God lightly. You are to perform that which you tell God you're going to do. Now we're jumping into Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 10, and we're at verse number 20, and here's what it says in the 10th chapter of Deuteronomy in verse 20. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him, and to him shall you hold fast and take oaths in his name. So you're going to fear God and hold fast to him, and in his name you're taking an oath. You're making a vow in the name of the Lord. Now we're jumping in Deuteronomy to chapter 23, and we're going to verse 21 and 22. And here's what it says in these two verses. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and it would be sin to you. But if you abstain from vowing, it shall not be sin to you. Wow. 
if you make a vow to God and don't fulfill it, it's a sin. It's not a sin if you don't make the vow and don't fulfill it. Makes sense, doesn't it? One, one more section of scripture in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 12, verses 16 and 17. And here's what it says. And it shall be, if they will learn carefully the ways of my people, to swear by my name as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then they shall be established in the midst of my people. But if they do not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord. So here's what I want you to hear from this Old Testament. The validity of oaths in the Old Testament is that if you say to God you're going to do something and you don't do it, it's a sin. So I want you to think about, have you promised God something? Spur of the moment, maybe as a bargaining chip, thinking you'll manipulate God to perform, do a miracle, heal you, intervene in your finances, whatever it might have been. And you told God, you do this, I'll do that. And you saw God intervene in your behalf, or you saw life proceed and, and you were okay, but you never kept your vow. Hmm. You realize that's a sin you need to repent of? So if you make a vow to God, we're told, keep that vow. Don't say lightly to God anything you say because you're supposed to keep your end of the bargain. So if you haven't done that, if you haven't done it, you know that you've made a vow to God at some point in your life and you haven't followed through, then I'm going to challenge you right now to repent, turn from that sin, ask God to forgive you, and then wait on the Spirit of God to see if you should go ahead and fulfill that or if it's something so far in the past, you can't do anything about it now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your care and concern for us. And that you're God who holds to his word. And you expect us to hold to ours. So we're looking at our conversation with you to see if we have promised you something and never fulfilled it. We repent of that sin. In the name of Jesus, we cover it under the blood of the Lamb of God. We receive forgiveness for that transgression and ask you to renew within us a right spirit right now in Christ's name. Amen. Watch what you say to God carefully. God bless you as you put your hands, your life, your conversation, your work, into God's hands. Be blessed. Have a great day.